Blackmagic studio cameras are fantastic and really visionary cameras. One of the things that I like so much about them is how they use the SDI return signal to carry data for CCU operation. So you can use the ATEM software to control master black iris, color correct the image, set the white balance or the shutter speed, or you could use one of Skahoy uh, CCU remotes we have right here to do the same things. But one of the problems of these cameras is that there has been no suitable lenses for them. So one thing that people uh, get the idea is to take an old broadcast lens, a B4 mount lens, and put on these cameras. And it is possible using an adapter from Micro Four Thirds to B4 mount right here. You can have those adapters in two flavors, one with a small glass inside and one without. That's not really the issue. The problem is that there's no way the studio cameras can control the iris that sits in the lens and not in the camera. But we made a box for that. The basics of CCU operation is controlling the iris and the master black. So on a Skahoy CCU light controller like this one, you have knobs for the iris and the master black. And as I turn these knobs, you'll see the ATEM software recognizes the commands and sends data on the SDI return signal to the camera. So just look in the software how master black will move this handle sideways and the same for camera two. And as I turn the iris knob, it goes up and down. And we can see some of these effects on the multi-viewer behind me where I have the two studio cameras connected up here. So if I turn the master black knob, you can see I go from milky white to really hard black, you can see here, and the same for the other camera. And those settings are communicated to the cameras on the SDI return signal, and the camera itself internally will use these parameters to give the one or the other look. But the problem is if I turn the iris knob over here, nothing happens. And why? As I said, because iris is in the lens and the lens is controlled and powered by this cable. So this is a regular old SD broadcast camera. And there you see how the lens here is attached to the camera through this plug. You can detach it like this. You can unmount the lens if you like. And over here, this is what we miss. We miss something to give power and iris instructions to the lens. And this is where our blue box comes into the picture because it has a high rose uh, 12 pin connector here, which is compatible with these lenses. Okay, so you plug it in and there you go. You now have a powered lens and you have the iris parameters communicated to the lenses. Okay, let's see that it works. If I turn the knob here, we should see that the iris, uh, maybe let me just adjust the black level a little bit. So I can turn the iris down and see the, and here you see the same, I can control the iris now for the second camera. The last part of this video will be dedicated to some details about the technology. Let's start over here. We have an ATEM switcher and it talks to a Skahoy CCU light controller here. This controller in turn talk to the ATEM B4 link boxes over here. And the reason for doing that is that the ATEM switcher can only handle simultaneous connections to between four and eight different clients at the same time. And that depends on the ATEM model. So what we did to solve this problem of capacity is to take our CCU controller and make it a master station for the B4 link boxes. So what it does is it takes the iris values from the switcher and distributes to each of the boxes sitting with a camera. And that happens over ethernet. Finally, let's look at some specific details of the B4 link box. But before we do that, I would like to show you how the iris ring is actually moving as I move the uh, iris parameters. You can see that the control signal coming from the B4 lens or the B4 link box will move the iris ring. So that's nice. Um, specific features of the box. We have 12 volt power supply in. It doesn't supply just the box. It also supplies the lens motors. We have ethernet connection here. And then on this side, we have um, lens connection. We have iris control on off. 
So basically what happens if I turn this off is that I can now move the iris ring manually. But as you can see, as soon as I turn it on, you can see the iris ring will go back to the position program from the ATEM switcher. Then I also have um, a preview tally plug. So uh, here I just made a really simple um, LED. What it will do is it will uh, show you the, um, it will light up green when the channel or uh, the input of the ATEM switcher connected to this camera is on preview. So the operator of the camera can see if the camera is on preview and likely to be selected for a program next. Of course, you wouldn't just put an LED on this plug. You would have a cable and you would somehow put the LED close to the monitor here. Um, that's the point, of course. But um, it's uh, very nice to have preview tally, which is not provided by the return SDI signals. And then finally, you have a camera number selector. So you can see this camera is camera number two. And that is determined by this binary dip switch I have right here. So just with a tiny screwdriver, you could turn this knob around and um, select another camera. Now I set it in uh, position zero. This will actually give you a, um, it's just a neutral position. So it will um, uh, do nothing basically. If I move it up to nine, we have on the other hand a test program and I need to reset the unit. And then you'll see as it boots up, it's actually gonna move the iris forth and back. And just so you, you can see, if you connect this to a lens, you'll see that the lens is moving forth and back. And yeah, the box is working then. So it will now go in the other direction just shortly. So now it moves back again. And you also see the preview tally LED is blinking. So that's the test mode. So basically, you select camera zero, or sorry, uh, one uh, through eight, and then you have a test mode on uh, camera nine, and uh, zero is just neutral. You can uh, disable the iris control with this button if you want that for whatever reason, and that's basically it. But we also have an extended version of this box, and uh, it looks uh, like this. The only thing that's extended is really the, uh, the plug here on the back side because it has additional two I.O. ports. So um, yeah, apart from ground 12 volt and the tally output for preview tally, you also have an input output, input output, which you could use for either driving an external or two external lamps here, or you could use it for push button input that could be programmed to um, uh, do a cut or select a specific input source of whatever. So we thought that it would be nice to integrate this additional feature now that we had the box and the whole communication going. So if you have a need for that, our extended ATEM B4 Link X will provide you with I.O. as well.